This video is about solving linear inequalities. Those are inequalities like this one that involve a variable, here x, but don't involve any x squared or other higher power terms. The good news is we can solve linear inequalities just like we'd solve linear equations by distributing, adding and subtracting terms to both sides, and multiplying and dividing by numbers on both sides. The only thing that's different is that if you multiply or divide by a negative number, then you need to reverse the direction of the inequality. For example, if we had the inequality negative x is less than negative 5, and we wanted to multiply both sides by negative 1 to get rid of the negative signs, we'd have to also switch or reverse the inequality. With this caution in mind, let's look at our first example. Since our variable x is trapped in parentheses, I'll distribute the negative 5 to free it from the parentheses. That gives me negative 5x minus 10 plus 3 is greater than 8. Negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7, so I'll rewrite this as negative 5x minus 7 is greater than 8. Now I'll add 7 to both sides to get negative 5x is greater than 15. Now I'd like to divide both sides by negative 5. Since negative 5 is a negative number, that reverses the inequality. So I get x is less than 15 divided by negative 5. In other words, x is less than negative 3. If I wanted to graph this on a number line, I just need to put down a negative 3, an open circle around it, and shade in to the left. I use an open circle because x is strictly less than negative 3 and can't equal negative 3. If I wanted to write this in interval notation, I write it as soft bracket, negative infinity, negative 3, soft bracket. Again, the soft bracket is because the negative 3 is not included. This next example is an example of a compound inequality. It has two parts. Either this statement is true or this statement is true. I want to find the values of x that satisfy either one. I'll solve this by working out each part separately and then combining them at the end. For the inequality on the left, I'll copy it over here, I'm going to add 4 to both sides, then subtract x from both sides, and then divide both sides by 2. I didn't have to reverse the inequality sign because I divided by a positive number. On the right side, I'll copy the equation over, subtract 1 from both sides, and divide both sides by 6. 9 sixths is the same as 3 halves. Now I'm looking for the x values that make this statement true or make this statement true. Let me graph this on a number line. x is less than or equal to negative 2 means I put a filled in circle there and graph everything to the left. x is greater than 3 halves means I put an empty circle here and shade in everything to the right. My final answer includes both of these pieces, which I'll reshade in green because x is allowed to be in either one or the other. Finally, I can write this in interval notation. The first piece on the number line can be described as soft bracket negative infinity, negative 2, hard bracket. And the second piece can be described as soft bracket 3 halves, infinity, soft bracket. To indicate that x can be in either one of these pieces, I use the union sign, which is a u. That means that my answer includes all x values in here together with all x values in here. This next example is also a compound inequality, this time joined by an and. The and means I'm looking for all y values that satisfy both this and this at the same time. Again, I can solve each piece separately. On the left, to isolate the y, I need to multiply by negative 3 halves on both sides. So that gives me y is less than negative 12 times negative 3 halves. The greater than flipped to a less than because I was multiplying by negative 3 halves, which is a negative number. If I clean up the right side, I get y is less than 18. 
On the right side, I'll start by subtracting 2 from both sides. And now I'll divide by negative 4, again, a negative number, so that flips the inequality. So that's y is less than 3 over negative 4. In other words, y is less than negative 3 fourths. Again, I'm looking for the y values that make both of these statements true at the same time. Let me graph this on the number line. The y is less than 18. I can graph that by drawing the number 18. I don't want to include it, so I use an empty circle and I shade in everything to the left. The statement y is less than negative 3 fourths, I need to draw a negative 3 fourths. And again, I don't include it, but I do include everything on the left. Since I want the y values for which both of these statements are true, I need the y values that are in both colored blue and colored red. And so that would be this part right here. I'll just draw it above so you can see it easily. So that would be all the numbers from negative 3 fourths and lower, not including negative 3 fourths, since those are the parts of the number line that have both red and blue colors on them. In interval notation, my final answer will be soft bracket negative infinity to negative 3 fourths soft bracket. As my final example, I have an inequality that has two inequality signs in it. Negative 3 is less than or equal to 6x minus 2 is less than 10. I can think of this as being a compound inequality with two parts. Negative 3x is less than or equal to 6x minus 2, and at the same time, 6x minus 2 is less than 10. I could solve this in two pieces as before, but instead, it's a little more efficient to just solve it all at once by doing the same thing to all three sides. So as a first step, I'll add 2 to all three sides. That gives me negative 1 is less than or equal to 6x is less than 12. And now I'm going to divide all three sides by 6 to isolate the x. So that gives me negative 1 6 is less than or equal to x is less than 2. If we'd solved it instead in two pieces above, we'd end up with the same thing because we'd get negative 1 6 is less than or equal to x from this piece and we'd get x is less than 2 on this piece and because of the and statement, that's the same thing as saying negative 1 6 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 2. Either way we do it, let's see if what it looks like on the number line. So on the number line, we're looking for things that are between 2 and negative 1 6, including the negative 1 6, but not including the 2. In interval notation, we can write this as hard bracket negative 1 6, to soft bracket. In this video, we solved linear inequalities, including some compound inequalities, joined by the conjunctions AND and OR. Remember, when we're working with AND, we're looking for places on the number line where both statements are true. That is, we're looking for the overlap on the number line. In this case, the points on the number line that are colored both red and blue at the same time. When we're working with OR statements, we're looking for places where either one or the other statement is true, or both. On the number line, this corresponds to points that are colored either red or blue, or both. And in this picture, that would actually correspond to the entire number line.